podcast hosting provided by Transistor. If you want to host your own show, head over to Transistor.fm and start a 14-day free trial. Hello everyone, this is Regen, the e-racing podcast. Welcome to an absolute banger of an episode we have for you today, the Jaguar I-Pace e-trophy, the final weekend in New York. And with me as always, it is the one and only, and probably the I-Pace e-trophy's largest fan, Chris Soulsby. <laughs> Hello Dina, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> did you enjoy that announcement? I did, yes, it was a very nice, you know, entry into the show, it was beautiful. I've been practicing that all day, but oh, it was one you. take. It was one take. So we'll get we'll crack into the show and media of the week. What have you got for us this morning, Chris? So I have actually have a proper media of the week this week. Be glad to know it's not some random app. Uh, um, <laughs> so my media of the week is a singer songwriter called Maisie K. Uh, she is a singer-songwriter from the United Kingdom, so my neck of the woods, and she blends her a love of musical theatre for a total passion for rock and roll to create her musical style, I suppose. Okay. And um, she's only 20. She hasn't released much music. She hasn't got the biggest following. However, it's fairly good, and that's a lot of praise coming from me, so... For those of you who know me very well, I hate all modern music, and I always slate it. But for me to say this is, you know, it's all right. It's very high praise. Um, standout songs, if you want to check her out. Probably a song called Enough or Volcano. They're actually the only two that I can remember at the moment. But I would recommend. So there you go. What's yours? <laughs> Brilliant. I will. I will link those in the show notes, and uh, hopefully we can get a, a few, few more hundred listens um, yeah, by the by the by the time that this goes out. So uh, very good. Um, what is your favourite band? Just off topic. My favourite band. It would have to be the Beatles. Sounds like a cliche, but I absolutely love George Harrison. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, mine is probably Coheed and Cambria. Do you know them? Coheed and Cat. I haven't heard of them. <laughs> All right, we'll look it up and then see what you think of me. <laughs> I'll have a peek, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, there is some awesome media of the week music that has been done for us by the Lamer Gamers podcast. And Rowdy5000 and Simply Travis, they are awesome. Uh, they obviously uh, tie in... And I think I've done this one before, but I just wanted to shout them out because the music that we've got is so awesome. Um, they're basically balancing professional life with gaming and, um, you know, artistic endeavor with married life. And I mean, I find it hard to play games and juggle the podcast and work. And I travel a lot for work. I'm actually, actually going to Wellington tomorrow. So... Uh, that'll be fun. But yeah, it's it's really cool, really down to earth guys, and just wanted to say thank you uh for the awesome music. Yeah, absolutely. Hats off. It's fantastic. It is really cool. It's sort of got yeah. a I don't know, like a F Zero vibe. Um and and you'll be you'll be hearing it moving forward uh for a few of our transitions, but probably mostly media of the week. Fantastic news. Now, Chris, let's get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. First, a couple of things. Uh, TW to Cheetah were absent from the final race weekend. Uh, and this one written by you, of course, I have that in the show notes because yes. I think I'd be slated, unfortunately, if I, of um, course. I put a different publication in there. So why were they absent? <laughs> I think I was the only journalist to report on this through the weekend. So whether it's just really irrelevant news or um, me being quite good, who knows? Um, but basically, it was an administration error. That's it. Uh, <laughs> so they weren't there. Um, so no, Stefan Radzinski or Adam Carroll. 
but they sh- I, well, I mean I believe they're back for the second season so prepare to see them again um, they're poised to sign James Rossiter actually uh, who is the DS to Cheetah reserve driver fun fact for you yeah that would make a very good team I've got to say yeah that exactly would be, yeah that would be a top class signing and he'd definitely, definitely give the others trouble. Yeah, precisely. I mean, James Rossett is a seriously quick guy, and if he went to the IPC Trophy, it would say a lot about the direction that the series is going in. Um, because he is a, a, he's a top-flight driver, you know? He's not, he's no slouch behind the wheel. He's, um, no. Tachita's success in Season 4 was very much down to the test work he completed, because that's when they discovered all of the pace and different bits of information so i mean that's i do remember that i do remember that and it was tatiana calderon as well Uh, oh yeah yeah um no she did test for them she did the same test with rossiter but it was the one before that i'm thinking of um frederick makiviki it's a name for you yeah the porsche factory driver guy in imsa i believe Mm. or used to Okay, well, interesting stuff. Uh, Now, we have an announcement, and because we're doing this so late, which is great, we have an announcement of attack mode for the IPC Trophy. The second season will commence with a double header in Adiria on the 22nd and 23rd before taking a two-month break, unfortunately. But attack mode, what is it going to bring to the IPC Trophy? And how do you think how do you think the drivers will cope with it? I mean, they would have obviously seen what's been happening in Formula E, mm-hmm. but how do you think it will differ with these bigger, chunkier these cars as opposed to the Formula E cars, Chris? I think this is a fantastic addition. I mean, I went to Berlin, obviously, as, as you know, and I spent a lot of my time in the IPC Trophy paddock. When I was talking to the drivers, there was very much one thing that they all said and agreed with. And it's got nothing to do with attack mode at the moment, but it's the braking. So the braking in the IPC Trophy cars is very, very good. It means that it can brake at the 25 metre board going into some corners. That's how strong and powerful the brakes are. And that means because everyone's braking at 25 metres, it's virtually impossible to perform an overtake. And now that we've got attack mode coming in, that should resolve this issue, and I can't wait because a lot of the races in the IPC Trophy last year were processional at times. Berlin was a good race. Paris was a good race. Um, there was another one that was Monaco was quite good. But now with attack mode, I think we'll see more overtaking. Definitely, that's a definite. I hope. And I think it'll add a lot more strategy to it as well. So the drivers are... I was at the Jaguar launch on Wednesday in at their new design studio in Warwickshire. And I was talking to the new championship, prince, uh, championship manager, because Marion Barnaby left, of course. And he was saying that drivers are only going to find out right before the race how long their attack mode lasts for how often they can deploy it and how powerful it is, if I can remember correctly. So you're going to see drivers using it to attack and drivers using it to defend. And it's impossible to plan strategy as well, because you're literally only going to find out just before the race. Now with that, it's going to bring the team's championship in it a bit more as well, because we're going to see them being a lot more involved. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously, the Brazilian team really streaks ahead but this might be able to sort of pull the pack together a bit more yeah i think so i think so because with the jaguar brazil cars last season they were they were supremely they were dominant in all honesty they absolutely outclassed the pro field anyway and did streak ahead with the team's championship and dominated those final few races and the championship now has more potential for greater unpredictability. So I think we will see it go down to the wire, essentially. But I think it could be very easy for a team to get on top of attack mode and really figure it out very early on. So, I mean, we'll see, won't we, in uh, in Adiria? We'll see what happens. We will see twice. Yes, it's a doubleheader race. Which is quite cool as well. So, yeah, so 22nd and 23rd for the IPACE E Trophy cars as well as Formula E. 
Yeah. And then we go to Mexico City, Hong Kong, Rome, Paris, Berlin, New York, with only the single race, Mm -hmm. uh, which also mirrors Formula E, and then also the double header in London to finish. Yeah. I don't think we're going to Hong Kong anymore, sadly. Ah, yes. That one came through as well. It's going to be Marrakesh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll have to update that. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Is there one that sort of sticks out that you're looking forward to seeing these cars roam around? It has to be London. I mean, I'm from the UK. It's my home race. It's Jaguar's home race. It's the season finale and it's a double header. Is there anything better? <laughs> well, I'm sure that Mitch Evans and uh, James, what's his name? James Collado, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they'll want to end strong in Formula E. But yeah, yeah so a very strong, very strong calendar for the mm. I-Pace cars as well. Yeah, what do you think about the new format? I think it'll bring the cars closer together. I think we'll see some real strategy. Mm. And I mean, well, we thought it might be a little bit of a gimmick for Formula E, but that mm-hmm. was proven quite wrong very quickly. Yeah. And yeah, I'm. this is one thing that I'm looking forward to for the I-Pace cars. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a. It'll be interesting. To, yeah, I can't. I mean, I can't wait. So, <laughs> so onwards we move to race one, which was obviously in New York City, a double header event. In qualifying, it was uh, it was an interesting affair. So we had um, Catherine Legg impress massively, and she qualified in second. However, her penalty from uh, the Berlin Prix, where she crashed into one of the TCR cars demoted her to the midfield, and championship contender Brian Sellers also crashed on his final flying lap, which meant that um, which meant there was a red flag and the session was not resumed. In practice, we also had Celia Martin crash, which meant that she was unable to contest qualifying for the penultimate round of the season. Did you see qualifying? I did. No, I made sure to watch it. It's a very unfortunate series of events. Now, obviously for Brian Sellers first up, uh, the crash meant that suspension pretty much gone and he was was not going to be able to race. Mm -hmm. Now, basically handing it to Sergio Jimenez. Um, on a silver platter with some chicken on the side and and gravy. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Was, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he made a small. I think he clipped the the wall earlier in the lap, and then ended up just steamrolling at the wall basically, and he absolutely thwacked it really hard and wrecked the car. Um, and it meant that Jaguar uh, SVO Vehicle Dynamics couldn't repair the car in time for the race. Which did essentially mean that, yeah, it was basically handed to Jimenez, which was um, really unfortunate for him because he was a massive championship contender at the time, and it was it was his time to shine, really, as far as it's concerned. It was, yeah, that's really unfortunate for him. But I'm sure, um, well, we can't confirm that he'll be back this season, but I think it's you know it's it's looking quite likely. Yeah, I mean, I hope. He's back because he's a very talented driver. He's a very quick driver. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I think I, I had an interview with him ahead of the New York race that was never published. Uh, and I can't remember what, I, what he said. But he, he said that, you know, it's looking good for a drive with RLL again. Um, although he was like, I have to win the championship. But, you know, <laughs> you know, times change, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, would you like to run down the qualifying and then we'll get into the race? Yeah, for sure. So in qualifying, we saw Jaguar Brazil racing Sergio Jimenez come out on top by posting a 1 minute 28.211 second lap. Um, Catherine Legg qualified in second for RLL, however, was demoted to the midfield with a grid penalty from Berlin. Kaka Bueno was third, with Simon Evans, the boy from your neck of the woods, uh, was fourth. Um, Brian Sellers completed the top five, um, posting a lap that was fast enough for, fastest enough for fifth um, before his crash. In Pro-Am, it was Bandar al Asai from Team Saudi Arabia. It was sixth, and Yachi Zhang, his uh, main title rival for Pro-Am, was seventh. 
Ahmed Ben Khanan qualified eighth. Z Z Zhang was ninth. We had Mark Hacking in the Jaguar VIP car. He was riding a feature on the IPC Trophy for a magazine in America. And then Celia Martin wasn't um, classified because of her crash in practice one. So she couldn't contest qualifying for race one, which was a shame. Yeah, I've got one question. You're a journalist. When are they going to put you in the car? (laughs) (laughs) The thing is, I always say this. I turn around to people, I'd love to drive this car. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But do you want to hear something really funny? What? I can't drive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you have a license? No. I can't, I can't drive. So, um, yeah, it would be great. So I'm hoping that if I don't learn how to drive and pester them enough and then they do put me in the car, it would be a hell of a first experience behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, maybe you should learn how to drive first. But <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> someday, someday. <laughs> um, back to the race. Uh, the VIP driver. Um, while we're talking about journalists, uh, he crashed in turn ten uh, with eleven minutes to go. Safety car deployed, and the race ended under yellow. This one dominated by Sergio Jimenez. Uh, likes to flag. Was there anything that really caught your eye apart from just a dominant performance for the <laughs> Brazilian guys? Uh, no, because, I mean, Sergio Jimenez in New York was completely unstoppable. And, you know, when he did win race one, he did completely secure the championship. There was no way that Salas could come back. It's probably the best that he's driven all season because Kaka Bueno was getting the upper hand towards the end of the year. And then it was just, no, this is my time. And he absolutely wiped the floor with the guy. And it was it was brilliant, in all honesty. Like, you know, a, a thoroughly deserved champion as well, because he did secure it at the end of race one. Yeah, I've, I can't fault him. And we moved to the Pro-Am. Bender LSIE sealing the Pro-Am championship as well. Yeah, so he... Um, he beat Z, Z Zhang. Uh, it's quite hard to say, actually. He beat Z Zhang um, to that title. Again, um, deserved. He was very competitive at the start of the season. And then, you know, he made a couple of mistakes here and there um, later on, which meant that um, Z Zhang was able to close up. But yeah, I think if Bandar Al Asai had uh, maintained his consistency from the start of the year, um, he, he probably would have wrapped it up before New York, in all honesty. There was a chance he could have done it in Berlin, to be fair. So, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts about him moving up to the pro category? Is that something that we could see for winning the pro-am category? I've got no idea. Uh, <laughs> I think it'd be good because the thing is, he did mix it with the pro drivers. He was only like a, t- a tenth or two shy at times, which is very impressive for an, a pro arm driver. Um, I don't know how they actually select their pro drivers, though. I think it might be based upon like, licenses and um, experience. So, uh, you make a good point there. He might not have the the international. C or whatever it is to race in this one. Whatever it is, yeah, I've got no idea what it's called. I don't know. I, I think it might be license based, but I'm not too sure. I'll look that up. Yeah, I only know about licenses from Gran Turismo. So if international C is not a thing, don't flame me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played Gran Turismo, so I don't know. You might be right for all I know. Yeah, maybe yeah, so. Maybe, maybe um, right. <laughs> maybe I am. That would be that would be quite interesting if they were actually real licenses. Someone write in or, or Twitter. Yep, I actually want to know if they are real. Okay, Sergio Jimenez on top. Kaka Bueno, Simon Evans in third, rounding out the podium. Catherine Leg, uh, Banda Alasai. Actually, quite a good recovery from Catherine Leg there. Yeah. Um, Yaki Zhang, Ahmed Ben Khanan, Celia Martin, Z Zhang, Mark Hacking, of course, uh, didn't didn't finish the race, and Brian Sellers with the DNS did not get to the start. Yeah. Race two and qualifying, Sergio Jimenez basically destroying everyone once again. 
Uh, Kakabueno couldn't beat him, but only by 0.152 seconds. Ahmed Bidkanan took pole in Pro-Am, and after crashing in race one, Mark Hacking did not contest the final leg of New York City. Uh, Brian Sellers, he did have a repaired car, which was quite cool, so it was good, but an oil leak meant that he actually didn't really complete a lap and, and started in last place, so they couldn't couldn't get it working properly, and uh, he, he struggled through the field. It was an infuriating weekend for Brian Sellers. I really felt sorry for the guy. They, they put in so much work to repair the car, and it was ready, and he was sat in the pit lane for the entire qualifying session because of an oil leak that they couldn't locate. That's rough. It is really hard, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I wish he could have just got in the mix. Mm-hmm. And and really, I I think we both talked about it, that we wanted to see what he could do. Yeah. And I actually pegged him to win the championship. So Yeah, I think I did too, yeah. It's it's such a shame because he was he was looking so good and it would have been great to see him up there. And one tiny little mistake in qualifying, clipping the wall lightly, led to something bigger. And then meant that he could only contest one session in the entire weekend, which was the final, well, sorry, two sessions practice. And then the final race of the season. So at least he could race though. I mean, that's the, that's the main thing, right? It is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shame though. Let's get into the race. Uh, Sergio Jimenez domination once again. Cacabueno second, a fourth Jaguar Brazil 1-2, and like you were saying, an absolutely dominant performance in New York. There's mm-hmm. there's nothing nothing less to describe it there. Catherine Legg from fourth to third, challenging Bueno until the chequered flag, but couldn't quite get round him. And I thought that Catherine really, really shined in New York. You know, obviously tough with the penalty in the first race, But this one, she was really on top of her game. Yeah, I agree. I think the RLL guys did a good job at the start of the season. And then it just kind of started to, it was lacking something, wasn't it? In the midfield, in the mid-season point. And Catherine was like, "Mm," just very midfield, well, fairly average, I'm going to say, which is quite controversial. Um, She wasn't really doing anything. And then in New York, we saw, you know, muscle, like, you know, muscles out, you know, really, really scrapping uh, for the positions. And it was really nice to see. It might have been an upturn in form for RLL because they were bringing um, additional track support for New York in an attempt to really close in that battle with the Jaguar Brazil guys. So I don't know if that's a result of that or her licking the stamp and sending it and really going for it. She did a really good job. Yeah, and uh, Bin Kanan won Pro Am, so his second win of the season. And uh, yeah, I mean, can't complain. That was a really, really good showing from him too. Which he's sort of been up and down, obviously in the shadow of Banda Elisai. But yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, it was a a good win. It was his second of the year. Uh, he has had a up and down season, and I mean, Banda Elisai was did completely outclass him. Uh, Alasai was he was fast wasn't he in Pro-Am um, he was incredibly dominant uh, very early on um, but yeah I mean it was a deserved win it was a good win so and it helped him secure third in the championship I believe yes yeah it did yeah very important result I was hoping that Celia Martin would get would get third in the championship or fourth but it wasn't to be with her car shutting down Quite close to the end. Yeah, I think we both had our money on Celia Martin beating Ahmed Bin Khanen in the championship standings, but uh, her car literally shut down in the final few minutes. It's a shame. And she was doing so well. Like, bearing in mind, she crashed, missed most of practice, couldn't do qualifying because of the accident, and then did race one. She was actually really, really good at race two. She was making a lot of passes. So it would have been, if she hadn't made that mistake in practice, it would have been fascinating to see where she ended up um, in both of the races with more experience of the track. Because, I mean, towards the end of the season, she was really scrapping um, for the higher positions. She almost won in Berlin. Um, so it, it's just really unfortunate. Yeah, there's a lot of 
a lot of things that we we just want to see all the cars start the race have a have a good race no dnfs by just the yeah. car yeah precisely um and yeah we were hoping that it would just all shake out organically but unfortunately a few things and a couple of small mistakes have handed it to the brazil racing guys so yeah. this this season uh we're looking at hopefully Hopefully more cars on the grid. I think you were talking last time uh, that there could be could be a few more. Well, I think organically, just due to the fact some of the teams that are only running one car will have two. Yeah, I heard. I've heard the number seventeen. Uh, I've heard a grid of seventeen for season two, which is nice. I mean, with a new championship like last season's, you get a lot of teams that are aren't really willing to commit to it because it is the first inaugural season. We saw that with Formula E. And now that it's in its second season and they know how it works, we'll see more teams and more high-profile drivers hopefully get stuck into that. And I can't wait. It's going to be good. It's going to be a real cracker. It is. I've got a grin right now. It's, it's going to be really, really good. It's coming through the headphones. It really is. <laughs> Okay, final standings for the pro class. Sergio Jimenez, 149. Kaka Bueno, 121. Brian Sellers, 107. Simon Evans, 106. Catherine Legg, 86. Stefan Razinski, 43. And Adam Carroll on 6. And the Pro-Am, would you like to do that one, Chris? In Pro-Am, we have Bandar Alasai on 155. Yachi Zhang on... 136, Ahmed Ben-Kanan on 117, Celia Martin on 77, Zi Zhang on 36, Tao Wang on 11, and Keelin on 11. And I've just realised that I've been saying Zi Zhang is the main title protagonist, and it was Yachi Zhang throughout the entire episode, so I'm terribly sorry about that. They did go through a few drivers, to be fair. Yeah. Oh, the VIP. Ooh. And I, t I tweeted Alice Powell and said, are you going to be driving in the I-Pace E-Trophy? Uh, because I want to see her back. And she ended up being fifth in Arderia. And that was just brilliant. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed her in the W Series. And hopefully, I do have my fingers crossed. She is one of the people that I want to see in the car this season. Yeah, I would like to see Alice Powell in one of the cars at least because she was the first VIP driver of the season, the first ever Jaguar VIP driver ever. She finished fifth in Adiria and it's the best result that any VIP driver had and that's beating established drivers like Salvador Duran, uh, Archie Hamilton and um, David Cheng who obviously races in WEC. And she'd been away from motorsport for ages. She hadn't raced for years, uh, from what I understand, prior to that. So it would be it would be nice to see what she can do um, with more experience. And yeah, it'd be good. And Stefan Rosinski, I would want to see him back in the car as well. Um, thought he was really getting into it and going from strength to strength, but unfortunately dropped for Adam Carroll. Do you want to see him back in the car as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Stefan, he, he had a difficult start to the season. He had a lot of DNFs, a lot of crashes, but then when he settled into it, he was actually delivering strong results. I think he came second in one of the races. I can't remember which one exactly. But he did do a good job towards the end, and it's a shame that they did get Adam Carroll in. I understand like Adam Carroll has experience of Formula E tracks because he used to drive for Jaguar, and he is a very a seriously quick guy. But at that point, a late change, a change that late in the season, I think I'd rather have the guy who has been in the car for the entire year doing the final few races, especially when he's in good form. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to be fair, Berlin was the Berlin was the final race for TW Watachita as well, because they didn't do New York, so it didn't really make much of a difference. No, but uh, yeah. Um, and quickly before we get to the end of season awards, uh, is there anyone that you want to see in the car? In the car, um, whether that is a VIP driver. Or whether it is, you know, in, in one of the new teams or 
an existing team? Ooh, that's a hard call. Um, I would quite like to see Archie Hamilton, actually. I think... Actually, I'm going to go in with the main man from the VIP category. <laughs> you know who I'm going to say? Salvador Duran. Because the thing is, it was mental. Like that race in New York, in Mexico City. It was bonkers. I want to see more of that. <laughs> you know I mean? oh, you've, broke, you've broken me. <laughs> the guy hit every single thing on the track. That, who doesn't want that? <laughs> <sighs> I do want that. I definitely do. Yeah, but no. <laughs> maybe, maybe in one of the maybe in one of the first races, get it out of the way early. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do uh, it so you can't damage the championship standings too much at the end. But yeah, I I think for me, I kind of want to see like what a sort of recent ex Formula One driver would do. Mm. Like, I just want to see someone like I don't know. Um, Marcus Ericsson or just someone like that who, you know, really knows his way around Formula One. Um, obviously, this is a very different car and, and just see how they adapt to it. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I think I mean, be they're going to be just insanely fast. Um, I can't think off, off the top of my head who would suit that um, or, or, you know, even one of the Formula Two guys. Nico Hulkenberg. We'll put Nico Hulkenberg in the second TWR car. I'm sure he'll accept. And that's it. Set. The IPC trophy will be watched by many people. <laughs> oh, it would be. But maybe even as a, as a VIP driver. It would be good if we could How cool would that be? It would be really good. Yeah. It'd be very yeah. good for Jaguar as well. It would, yeah. I mean, do they have anyone in their stable that's sort of high profile enough to put in? Um, you could always put Alex Lynn in one of the cars. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's too soon. Uh, never mind. Too soon, too soon. Never mind. Okay, uh, end of season awards. We're not going to, yeah, we're not going to continue on that uh, track. Pro driver of the year, Chris. Who have you got? Sergio Jimenez. Um, he was the most consistent driver. He finished on the podium in every race apart from one. Uh, and in New York, quite simply, he was untouchable. He won both the races and he got pole position for both races and led every lap in both races. He got every single point that he could in the final weekend. Don't think, you know, you can't do better than that, can you? No, not really, no. Uh, I have to agree with Sergio there. I think Caca Bueno as well, quite close, but Sergio mm. just... Because because he absolutely bossed it, you just can't really look past him. Yeah, precisely. It was ah oh, the consistency he had was insane. It was completely insane. Uh, Pro M driver of the year. Who have you gone for? I have gone for Celia, or the eventual winner Banda Alasai, as he was fast. Uh, we've already talked about him. I want him to move up to the pro class. We'll see if that happens, but. Uh, he was getting close to their times. I think he did a really good job. A bit of a slump, but finished it out. And, I mean, he he wasn't really that pressed in the end. So that's where we're going for Pro-Am. It's a good choice. I've gone for um, Celia Martin on that one. Because prior to the IPC trophy, she'd never raced in a championship before. She was a total rookie coming into this. And I think this is one of the real success stories of the first season. Um, because it, it still amazes me. She arrived in Adiria um, last December, hadn't competed in a race before, from what I understand. And she qualified at the back of the grid. Um, she looked slightly out of her depth. But then weekend upon weekend, she improved and improved and improved was challenging for podiums. I think, was it four or five podiums? Four or five consecutive top three finishes um, in the mid-season. And then she almost won in Berlin. And that, her drive in Berlin alone is something to marvel at, really. Because if you looked at her driving in the first race of the season in Adiria and looked at the performance in Berlin at I would argue that you 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 wouldn't believe that it was the same driver, and it was just nice to see that continual development 
um, throughout the season. And it's that's why we want a series like the IPC Trophy. You can help racing drivers hone their craft or help some people achieve their dream of becoming a racing driver. And it's really cool. I love this championship. That's why I like it. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, this as a support series to Formula E, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> this as its own series, absolutely brilliant. We're just both so passionate about it. It's, it's great. Mm-hmm. Precisely. I mean, I just love it. I think it would work well. As a, it works perfectly as a support series. It would work well as a standalone series. Um, because of the high quality that is there, and I mean, I can't wait for season two. I really can't wait for season two. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. Uh, we've got ten races. We've got attack mode now. We're going to see a bigger grid, bigger drivers, hopefully. And um, yeah, my hands are rubbing together. <laughs> uh, what was your race of the year for me? It was Paris. Um, but I was also going to say, and you already said it, but the drive from Celia Martin sort of made Berlin as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's between the two easily. Both pretty unpredictable. Uh, obviously, Paris more so with <laughs> Caca Bueno going in, well, going into the wall from a puncture and and uh, the fall out of that. But uh, I think those two probably a step ahead. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it's definitely between Paris and Berlin. I mean, in Paris we had hail, <laughs> but yeah, how often do you see that? Huh? We had hail in Paris, which led to a totally unpredictable and bonkers race. And in Berlin, the battle for both the pro win and the pro arm win was absolutely oh, it was so tense. I remember I was I was by turn ten uh, in Berlin for the race, which is the happen. And that's where all of the diving was getting done. And, ooh, it was so exciting. It was really good. Yeah, no, it was pretty, pretty thrilling. So, Chris, is there anything else uh, from the Jaguar event uh, that you want to want to chat to us about? So, um, a lot of you will have seen this. But finally, we will have Formula E and IPC Trophy Lego. So excited! It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I've got, I've I've already got my order in with Santa. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I've always wanted to build the IPC Trophy VIP car, uh, and especially the Gen the I Type Three. But yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, I I think a few people have been calling for like a Formula E Lego set because I know they've done Formula One uh, cars in the past. But this is going to be really cool. I think it comes out on. I want to say either December the 1st or January the 1st. I think I saw January the 1st. I think it is just missing, just missing Christmas. But that's okay because you just have to get vouchers and then you can buy it. There you go. I'm sure it'll be stocked everywhere. So Formula E fans, iPace fans, get vouchers for places that you'll be able to buy it from. And there you go. I can't wait. It's going to go nicely with my Robo race cars on my desk. Yeah, it's it's just gonna be fun, you know, like going up to the shop and going into the the kids the the, the kids like the toy shop, and then there's a fully grown adult picking up your Lego set and taking it to the counter, and just the look, to the look behind the counter of enjoy this. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Now I've I've <clears throat> I've actually actually now this one I'm not sure if I'm going to leave this in but when I went to buy the robo race cars uh-huh. I got two I got yeah. two of them and I went up to the counter and said oh just these thanks and she goes oh so you had to get the same ones yeah you know they'll fight if if you don't um get the same cars yeah. I don't have kids <laughs> <laughs> So, I completely sold it, but uh, yeah, but they are really cool. So brilliant! That's so funny. It's great. Uh, uh, ooh, that's yeah. good. That's really cool. Oh, uh, so there's your excuse, people. Uh, now, if you want to chat to us, uh, talk about the IPACE E Trophy Formula E. 
the ERA Championship, uh, ETCR, or anything electric, uh, including Robo Race, of course, you can get in touch with us, regenracingpodcast.com or at Regen Racing on Twitter. You'll most likely get me behind the Twitter. Um, but also, Chris, what are your socials? You can follow me on Facebook. No, you can't. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram uh, by just typing in at Chris underscore Soulsby. Um, you can I do have a Facebook page somewhere if you want to like that. Um, it's rarely used now, but um, it's still there. You can eat well. If you go on a motorsport week, you can try and find my email. I don't really dish it out, but <laughs> yeah. So also, there's a few ways that you can support us. Uh, on the website, there's Transistor, who is our awesome host. Uh, if you want hosting for your podcast, uh, if you've got a great idea for a podcast, let us know. I'll have a listen, because I'm constantly listening to podcasts. But um, yes, we've got that. Uh, we use Plink Smart Links for the podcast, where you can click on that and go straight to the app of choice, uh, whether that's desktop or anything on mobile phone, Android, iOS. Uh, And what else? Leave us a review. We try and make this as high quality and uh, as fun as possible. So if you could leave us a review, that would be great on either iTunes, um, Apple Podcasts, or Podchaser. Thank you once again, Chris. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. It's been lovely to talk about the IPC trophy. Yeah, I mean, if it gets big, we might have to just split it in half and do a Formula E show and an iPace show. That would be a very enjoyable in all honesty. <laughs> and with that, listeners, talk to you again soon. Bye for now. Goodbye. I need to put my teeth back in.